Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 through 5. It says, does this scripture replace or nullify Leviticus 11 pertaining to the foods we can and cannot eat? Also, please provide precepts to combat those that will use this scripture against the dietary laws. So we're going to read 1 Timothy chapter 4. I think I want to start at verse 1. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits. And doctrines of de devils. So the so the scriptures let us know and give us basically a, a prerequisite as, as, as to what we're about to read. That that's going to come in the last days, which is the latter times, which is today, the day that we're in. There's going to be come some that come in. They're going to be some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's your modern day Christianity. All these different religions that we see out there, your modern day, the Christianity, uh, the Catholic Church, all of those things, those are deceit, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So these, those that they're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, they're going to speak lies and hypocrisy, meaning they're going to teach things that's outside of the Bible, that the Bible don't teach. They're going to teach you things like the laws are done away with. They're going to teach you things that you can eat what you want. Read on. Forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry. No, specifically, that's the Catholic Church. The, the priests are not allowed to have a wife. They're not allowed to get married. That's against the scriptures. Go to um, 1 Corinthians 7. And it says, for notice, it says forbidding, meaning that, that they're telling you you can't get married. Now, if, if, if an individual brother or sister has that strength of mind, that fortitude to not get married and stay pure from fornication, then that's all power to you. But it says that the, that the, that it says that the seducing spirits are going to forbid you to marry. When that's not according to the scripture, read. Uh, 7 and 1. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So Paul is giving, he said, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. So if a, if a man, like I said, if a, if a man has the the ability to possess his, like it says in uh, 1 Thessalonians, possess his vessel in sanctification and honor where he's able to not get married but not be falling into lust and temptation, then, hey, do it. It's good for a man not to touch a woman. If you can, if you can maintain that state of mind and put, keep pushing his truth without being played with lust and falling into fornication, so be it. Go, go ahead and do it because that's, that's how Paul was, read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. But if you cannot contain yourself to avoid yourself from fornicating, 
Read. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So the Bible doesn't, there's nothing in the Bible that forbids a, a, a brother or a sister from getting married. It actually encourages it to avoid, avoid the fornication. But there are some seducing spirits, namely the Catholic Church, that says they forbid the priests to get married. They also forbid nuns to get married. And what do you see going on in the Catholic Church? They molesting little boys and all, all of those, all that foolishness is going on because they forbidding to marry. Go back to First Timothy. Uh, chapter 4 and 3. The book of First Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. So it says commanding to abstain from meats. Read. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So it says commanding to abstain from meats. No, it's specifically with the Catholic Church you got what they call it, uh, Lent. Well, uh, forget the time they started, but for a certain period of time, they don't eat no meat. I think they only eat fish or something. But they don't eat meat for a certain period of time, and they put the little ash cross on it. I think it's ash. They call it Ash Wednesday or something. But it says forbid, they forbid them to eat meat. Let's mm -hmm. go on to Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Cause we want to see what the Bible says. The book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. So this is directly after the flood, after, after the Most High saved Noah and his son, his two sons and their wives uh, from the, with the flood when he flooded the earth. And he says, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. So note at this time, it was no longer that we only ate herbs, but now we also ate meat. That's what the scriptures say. So go back to first uh first Timothy four and three. The book of first Timothy chapter four and verse three. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So it says abstain from meat, it says which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 7, verse 15. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 15. There is nothing from without a man that entereth into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. So Christ is just, he's just explaining, he says, nothing that's outside of the man that's going to come into the man and defile the man. But he said, what's what come out of the man that defile him. And he's going to further expound what he's talking about. Read. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Jump to 18. Verse 18. And he said unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from Without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him. But it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. Uh huh. And so he, he says, so, he, so here, notice he said, he said, because it entereth not into his heart, which is talking about his mind, and you look at Mark 7 and 21, it says, which is we're going to go into, it says, it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly. And goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. Meaning that when you go into your belly, you digest the food. It's just talking, that's what all it's talking about. But what, he's what Christ is dealing with is your thoughts is what defile you. The way you think. Read, and it's going to go further explain that. Read. Verse 20. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Read. For from within... Out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. Because it's from your from your mind, but however you think, that's how you are. If your if your mind is always thinking uh, adulterous thoughts, you always have an evil thought about your brother or sister. 
that's what defiles you because that's the evil nature. It revealed the, the evil that you have. If you have evil thoughts, you're an evil person. Read. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Now, real quick, go to Matthew 5 and 17. Just to show, because Christ was dealing with the thoughts. He was dealing with the thought process of the Pharisees. So that's basically he if you if you read if you read any portion of the the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Christ was always cutting up the Pharisees because they were the ones that knew the law but were not upholding the law. They was living hypocritical lives. So a lot of the parables that he was talking about, he was actually referring to them. Because one of the things that happened in the passages that, that we just read, they was getting on somebody about uh, washing hands. I hope I'm not mixing the stories. On oh, somebody washing their hands, not washing their hands before they eat. And he addressed them. It's not. It's not that that's going to defile you. It's what you think. Well, just it's what you think in your mind and your heart. The things that you do based off your thought process. Uh, Matthew chapter five and seventeen. Just to further expound on that, because Christ was dealing with their thoughts, not not uh, the dietary law. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. The book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So Christ was very clear when he was walking the earth. He said, don't think not for, not, not for a moment. Do not think that I came to do away with God's laws. I did not come to put his laws away. Read. Or the prophets. Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ came to fulfill those things that were written of him, which he did. When you look at um, uh, Isaiah 63, or no, Isaiah 53, it, it describes how Christ, we ain't got to go there, but it described in the prophecies how Christ was going to die on the cross for the nation of Israel. Those are the things that he came to fulfill, those things that pertain to him. He came to fulfill those things. He didn't come to do away with God's laws because he taught God's laws and he kept God's laws. Why would he instruct us to do any different? Uh, so that was it on that verse, right? Go back. No, read on. Read 7, read 18. For verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So he says, Read it again. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So the earth is still here. We still walking in it. We still living in it. So that, therefore we see that the laws are not done away. There's no, there's no part of God's laws that's altered or changed. Because Christ made it very clear. He did not come to do away with God's laws. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Uh-huh. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach man so. So if he, if he did away with God's laws or if he changed God's laws, why would he be saying if you shall break one of the least commandments? Read. And, te and shall teach man so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Meaning that you're not going to get the kingdom. If you're teaching men to break any, any portion, even the ones that seem to be l of lesser value, you're not going to get the kingdom. Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So Christ was very clear that God's laws are not done away with. Back to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And 3. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them that which believe and know the truth. So it says, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them who, which believe and know the truth. So what did God create to be received to be 
of to be received with thanksgiving. Let's go to, um, I think I'm jumping ahead of myself. No, nah, read on. Read verse 4. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. So it says every creature of God is good. Let's go to um, Romans 7. Romans 7 and 12. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So it lets us know. So this is telling us that the commandment is good. God's laws, God's commandments are good. So his dietary law. Is good. So this this scripture is not going into that. So read First Timothy four and four once one again once more time. The book of First Timothy chapter four and verse four. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. So it says the word. Say it. Read it again. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused. So every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused. What that's going into is that the things that, let's go to Sirach chapter 39, yep, 21. Well, the things that the Most High created, they good for the purpose that he created them for. He didn't create a pig to be eaten. He didn't create shrimp, crab, lobster to be eaten. It has its own purpose in this earth to, to be here. It has a purpose. The book of Sirach, chapter 39, verse 16. All the works of the Lord are exceeding good, and whatsoever he command them shall be accomplished in due season. So when, it, so when the scriptures say that in 1 Timothy 4, when it says that, uh, let me see. Yeah, First Timothy chapter four and verse four. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused. So it says, for every creature of God is good. Why is every creature of God good? Because all the works of the Lord are exceeding good. When you read Genesis chapter one, after he after each day of creation, after he created the things, he looked back and said, he saw that it was good, and the end of, it was the evening, and the morning was the next day. Was the uh was that day, so jump to Sirach thirty nine, jump to twenty one, the book of Sirach chapter thirty nine verse twenty one. A man need not to say, "What is this? Wherefore is that?" For he has made all things for their uses. So everything that mo the Most High created, it has a purpose for why it was created. You have you have clean beasts and you have unclean beasts. Uh, jump to 325. Verse 25. For the, for the good are good things created from the beginning. So for the good, that's for the good, for those that are keeping God's laws, the Israelites that are keeping God's laws are good things created from the beginning. So the things that he created is for us to use it. If it's, if, if it's, if it's clean, dealing with the topic of food, if it's clean animals that we can eat, those things were created for the for for our good. But for those for the animals that were unclean, whatever we used them for, whatever they was necessary for, that was still was good for us. But the unclean animals, we are not allowed to eat. Read. So evil things for the for sinners. So evil things for sinners. I mean, they twist up God's word. And do as they please. Go back to First Timothy four and verse five. The book of First Timothy chapter read four, four. Read four with five. The book of First Timothy chapter four and verse four. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So now, so. 
So every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. So it says, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So now Leviticus chapter 11. Because it's, if it's sanctified by the word of God, that means the Most High gave some direction with his word. Leviticus chapter 11. And start at. Read 2. 11 and 2. Leviticus 11 and 2. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. So the Most High gave us instructions of what beasts we can eat on the earth. Uh, read. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud. Jump to, jump to verse 7. Verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. So this is specific. This is, you know, you jump to this because this is common in Israel. Israel love to eat pork. Love to eat, uh, what you call them things, chitlins and pig feet and all that other stuff. Never seen how people eat it, but our people love unclean food, but we have clear direction in God's laws not to eat those things. Jump up to 9. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers. Them shall ye eat. So we have clear commandment. This is, this is the precept. This is what we go to. This is how we know that God sanctified it through his word because his, he gave us clear instruction on what we can and cannot eat. It, all that's in the waters... We only can eat what's whatever has fins and whatever has scales. Meaning we can't eat shrimp. We can't eat uh, crab, lobster. Those are things that our, pe our people love to eat. Uh, catfish and catfish nuggets. We can't eat those things now that we are in the truth. We are learning God's laws as it is written. So 1 Timothy 4 does not is not a, um, a pass to eat unclean food. Because you still have, you have to go to the scriptures. The scriptures have to provide that understanding. And the scriptures don't provide the understanding that you can eat what you want. You can eat, un, you can eat unclean foods because the Most High did away with it. Because you can pray over it. No. That's not true. As we see in the scriptures. My bad. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. And ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So this is, this is clear, clearly telling you. In chapter 11, it goes through the dietary law. What we can and cannot eat. And this is the most I say is, I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves. And so when we eat unclean foods, we defile ourselves according to God's laws. Uh, read, read, jump to 46. Verse 46. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So this is how the we, we did sanct this is how the, the this is how it is sanctified through the word of God and prayer. By you going into God's law, seeing what God's laws say about the the differences of meats and what you can and cannot eat. And you apply that. You don't go based off of oh, your own uh, some the pastor's interpretation or somebody's interpretation of the scriptures without going precept and precept, precept upon precept. So let's just read, read, read 1 Timothy 4 and 5. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. 
For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So every creature of God is, is good. When they say every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused. If we refuse, if it be received with thanksgiving, it's sanctified by God's laws. Because we go to God's laws to see how what we are supposed to do and what we're suppo not supposed to do. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.